Now let's talk about passwords. There's a, a new law banning easy passwords like 1234. It's coming to force. It's part of a government measure to protect consumers from being hacked and cyber attacked. What it means is that manufacturers of phones and TVs and other tech devices are legally required to protect internet-connected devices against access by cyber criminals. If that can be done, but can it be done? Let's say uh, hello to Emily Taylor, Chief Executive of Oxford Information Labs and Associate Fellow at the International Cybersecurity Programme at Chatham House. Hello to you, Emily. Hello, John. Well, can you just tell us then about this new law and whether it will make devices more secure? It's a law that was actually passed two years ago and has come into effect today. And it will have uh, three main obligations. One is to ban default passwords, so the admin admin or password 1234. And it has a couple of other measures aimed to improve the cybersecurity of smart devices. OK, now, how does it work? Does it, because obviously in the end people choose their own passwords, how do you outlaw certain passwords? It's really about what comes as default. Right. So uh, it, so a lot of smart devices like baby cameras and so on, they, they get shipped to consumers with default passwords already in place, like admin, admin is incredibly common. So while it may be that the you know super alert consumer decides I'm going to fix my own password and 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 uh, in fact most people don't change default settings on anything unless they're forced to. So it's really an, a law aimed at the manufacturers and the people who are importing smart devices and it will benefit consumers because lots of research and industry best practice over the years has highlighted these three issues as things that would really make a difference to the cybersecurity of smart devices. So it's a really very simple fix, the, but one that could make a, a very big difference. So I guess the idea is you buy your, let's say what it is, a, a tablet, and then you set your own password. Or you're, you're offered one of those absolutely complex, you know, impossible to remember passwords, which you then change most likely into one that you can remember, but not an obvious one. Yeah, and the main thing is, John, that it won't be the same password across every single device. So mm. you imagine you're shipping baby cameras uh, and you're shipping out millions of them all with the same username and password. Well, it's child's play, literally, to to um, compromise those devices. And there have been major large-scale attacks that did exactly that. So even if people passwords are a bit rubbish which most of ours are that at least there's some chance that they won't be identical to absolutely everybody else's yeah. which is the current situation and you can always change your password to something else and many people will do that but you'll be you'll be prompted to choose a a, a more sensible password easy for yeah. you to remember or possible to remember but much harder for a hacker to get that's exactly right and also there will be a uh, there has to be advice about how long the device is supported. And this is incredibly important. You think how often you get uh, software updates on your phone or on your laptop or tablet. But actually, how often do you get a, a software update for your fridge or your washing machine or any of the other connected devices in your home? Mm. Now, a, lo a lot of these things are sort of uh, dealt with when things are naturally replaced. But big uh, consumer items like washing machines or doorbells, you don't replace them very often. So it's really important that the software is supported and updated over its lifetime. Yes. And when it comes to to, to for scammers and, and the way that they dig out passwords, there, there are programs, aren't there, for sort of professional scammers that can run through, I don't know, hundreds, countless uh, possible passwords in a second or two. Yes, what you're describing, John, is a, a brute force attack. Um, but often we we visualise or think about scammers and and cyber criminals as these lone people, you know, often kind of late teen men. But actually, it, it's a domain of organised crime, and so actually the the there is a huge. Um, apparatus behind the scams that we receive and there's also um, scams as a service, uh, service uh, just as there are um, an, uh, in in ordinary life in legitimate life so you can buy lists of compromised passwords and credentials which make your life much easier so you don't have to be that clever as a cyber criminal and there's a lot of organized crime involved 
All right. Emily, thank you. That's Emily Taylor, Chief Exec of the Oxford Information Labs.